Okay, so in this video, we'll be discussing what central banks do. So we have here an article from Investopedia.com. So essentially, we've had discussions before in banking and financial institutions about the central bank, but we'll go over them again. They just are fresher or a review, okay? So what is a central bank? Almost every country, they do have a central bank that uh, monitors or supervises the financial system of the country, okay? So the central bank has been described as the lender of last resort, which means it is responsible for providing its nation's economy with funds when commercial banks cannot cover a supply shortage. And what, in other words, the central bank prevents the country's banking system from falling. Okay, so essentially that's what they are trying to prevent: the okay? financial crisis, recession, uh, depression, right? Um, they have to control uh, through the use of monetary policies, you know, the interest rate, the excuse me, um, the amount of money in circulation, the rate of inflation or deflation, and then um, they have to make sure that uh, the numbers are within their targets, okay, so that uh, they would be assured that there is no possibility of a financial crisis, okay. Normally, they would, you know, change the interest rates depending on uh, the movements or the situation in the economy. They would, uh, in a way, uh, do certain things to either, what do you call that, lower the amount of money in the economy or increase the amount of money in the economy depending on what they want to happen. Do they want, you know, more transactions, economic transactions, or do they want to lessen that? The counter inflation and okay, things like that they're the ones responsible for those things however the primary goal of central banks is to provide the country's uh, currencies with price stability by controlling inflation so price stability essentially um, what they call this purchasing power of uh, the currency would remain at a certain level right a central bank also acts as the regulatory authority of a country's monetary policy and is the sole provider and printer of notes and coins in circulation. So they are the only ones allowed or authorized to print money, okay? bills and coins in circulation. And of course, they're also monitoring how much money is in circulation so that they could, you know, inject if it's uh, less and then retrieve back uh, if there's too much money in the economy. Okay. Time has proved that the central bank can best function in these capacities by remaining independent from government fiscal policy. So, in a way, uh, fiscal policy and monetary policy are go, uh, being run by you know two different uh, two different parties, right? You have the central bank uh, responsible for the monetary policy, and then you have the government responsible for the fiscal policy. Although, essentially. The central bank here in the Philippines is under the DOF, which is under the Office of the President, part of the government, right? But uh, the idea is that it acts independently from the government. Although the people, although the members of the monetary board, central bank, are appointed by the president of the Philippines today. But essentially, what they wanted to show is that they are, in fact, independent of the government. Kind of hard to, you know, prove. Anyway. And therefore, an influence by the political concerns of any regime. But, you know, as long as they are not political, as long as they uh, base their decisions on the numbers, on the actual economic situation, on the actual market situation, then all's good, right? A central bank should also be completely divested of any commercial banking interest. All the appointed members of the monetary board should not hold any, you know, position from any commercial bank, okay, or a private bank or financial institution. Key takeaway: Central banks carry out a nation's monetary policy and control it, money supply, money circulation, often mandated with maintaining low inflation and steady GDP growth. Again, GDP being a measure, uh, this is a measure of economic growth and um, this is based on how much goods or services are being bought in the economy, right? 
And then of course, if there's so uh, if there's too much spending that could lead to inflation, so they're trying to in a way pace the growth of the GDP. Okay, spread it over the year and not in bulk. Like let's say it's only March or May, but there's already a sudden increase in the GDP that could lead to inflation. So they're trying to you know they would have to impose other rules or other regulations to ensure that inflation would not happen or it would not go over the targeted inflation rate for the year okay on a macro basis central banks influence interest rates and participate in open market operations to control the cost of borrowing and lending throughout an econo economy so why do they uh, change the interest rate so uh, supply and demand so if there is you know low GDP growth that would mean that there's uh, the people are not spending much okay? they are not buying goods and services and that could hamper the economic growth right so in that case the central bank could decrease the interest rate what would happen if they increase the interest rate borrowers would be you know encouraged to borrow or people would be encouraged to borrow because hey the interest rate is low uh, if i borrow money now i would be paying low interest right so in that case they would be encouraged to borrow and with that borrowed money in their hands they would be spending it in the economy okay so that would encourage uh, encourage spending and with that additional spending the GDP would grow okay and then it would stimulate economic activity in a way okay and then the reverse scenario if there's too much spending in the economy you know the monetary bank or the monetary board would be like hey slow down okay so in that case they could increase the interest rate so with the increase in interest rate you know people would be like nah I don't want to borrow money Okay, businesses would also be like that. Oh no, uh, we don't want to borrow more money. Okay, and so without the additional funds from the borrowings, then the spending would be slowed down or hampered. And in that sense, that would help in uh, reversing the effects of inflation. Okay, because there's slowed uh, spending in the public. Okay, so that's just some of the scenarios. With regards to interest rate, okay, why do they have to change the interest rate? Central banks also operate on a micro scale, setting the commercial bank's reserve ratio and acting as lender of last resort when necessary. So reserve ratio, I think currently it's at 20%. So let's say you are a depositor, you put 1 million pesos in the bank. The bank is mandated to ensure that 20% of your deposit, so that's 200,000, remains in their reserve, okay? They cannot use the 20% to, you know, lend to other people, to businesses or individuals. They cannot. They can only lend as much as 80%, okay? Uh, for the reserve, they have to keep that in the bank. To ensure that if you come and, you know, what you'd like to withdraw some of your money, then they would have that money to give to you, okay? But of course, if they have a lot of uh customers then it's really there and there's, there's a lot and so the reserve ratio it could you know go up depending again on the market situation it could be lower depend i think the lowest they went to is 10 percent but then they also increased it up to 30 percent before if, again depending on the financial situation okay and then they could act as lender of last resort for financially troubled banks or financial institutions, but especially banks. So if the certain banks have you know, financial difficulties and they cannot borrow from other financial institutions, then they can go to the central bank to ask for you know, certain types of loans available to them. Okay. Of course, central bank would not want these financial institutions to fail especially if they are you know, if they have a lot of customers because that would disrupt in a way the financial system so they don't want to do that they don't want that to happen so they become the lender of last result and they want to ensure that this uh, specific uh, financial institution having financial difficulty would be able to survive and you know come out of it uh, doing well in their finances okay so anyway, they are go they're probably going to help not just financially, but provide 
uh, other kind of help, consultancy, advice, uh, conservatorship, if it comes down to that. Okay. The rise of the central bank. So historically, the role of the central bank has been growing, some may argue, since the establishment of the Bank of England. The I think the first central bank is this one. It is, however, generally agreed upon that the concept of modern central bank did not appear until the 20th century, so just in the last century, in response to problems in commercial banking systems because they have been deregulated you know, prior. Uh, between 1870 and 1914, when world currencies were pegged to the gold standard, uh, maintaining price stability was a lot easier because the amount of gold available was limited. Consequently, money, uh, monetary expansion could not concur simply from a political decision to print more money, so inflation was easier to control. This was how it was back then. The central bank at that time was primarily responsible for maintaining uh, the convertibility of gold into currency. Essentially, the meaning of gold standard is that a nation can only print as much money equivalent to their gold reserves. Okay, So if their gold is only valued at, uh, let's say, 1 trillion, then they could only print as much as tri uh, 1 trillion pesos. But first, that would already include those money that ha they have already printed and circulating in the economy okay so if they want to print more they have to ensure that they have additional you know gold in their reserves okay? but if they don't then they cannot um and these were some of the things that happened when it was still you know the gold standard currently uh, there's no nation using the gold standard anymore we are all on you know fiat uh, standard but we'll get into that later uh, it is issued notes based on a country's reserves of gold. At the outbreak of World War I, the gold standard was abandoned and it became apparent that in times of crisis, governments facing budget deficits because it cost money to reach war uh, and needing greater resources would order the printing of more money. As governments did so, they encountered inflation. Okay, that's the downside of it. Uh, for governments to be, you know, allowed to just print money when they need it. But of course, if they do, if they do not control the amount of money in the currency, then it could really lead to inflation. And they've learned their lesson from that situation, right? So currently, no government would recklessly just print money for convenience. Okay, They have to consider how it's going to impact the overall economy. After the war, many governments opted to go back to the gold standard to try to stabilize their economies. With this rose the awareness of the importance of the central bank's independence from any political party or administration. Because, you know, you can't just have someone, uh, what do you call this, telling the central bank to print more money just because they want to. Okay, so that shouldn't happen, right? Because sometimes, uh, you know, uh, people in the government, especially the leaders, some of them are not exactly aware of how the economy works. They might have a basic understanding, but, you know, the deeper understanding of how it could affect different sectors, different scenarios, and how it would affect the different factors, you know, more and more factors that shouldn't happen. Let the people or let the experts in finance do their job, okay? and make the recommendations. If we need to print more money, then we're going to print more money. But you have to, you know, control, supervise, ensure that the effects would not be negative to the economy as a whole. Okay, um, during the unsettling times of the Great Depression and the aftermath of World War II, world governments predominantly favored a return to a central bank dependent on the political decision-making process. This view emerged mostly from the need to establish control over war-shattered economies. Furthermore, newly independent nations opted to keep control over all aspects of their country. A backlash against colonialism. Okay. So, essentially, although what we're trying to show is that central bank is independent from the government, it is still part of the government. Okay. Uh, the rise of managed economies in the Eastern Bloc was also responsible for increased government interference in the macroeconomy. 
Eventually, however, the independence of the central bank from the government came back into fashion in Western economies and has prevailed as the optimal way to achieve a liberal and stable economic regime. Because essentially, you know, the government has to run the country, and that would include uh, the financial system as well. But decision-wise, they should not be influenced by any political person or political party, right? Because you know, currently, the government is, uh, money, of course, Monetary board is under them, BSP, DOF, Department of Finance, and then also they have a separate uh, department for you know the economic uh, situation, monitoring the economic situation of the Philippines, right? And you know currently they are pushing for opening uh, the various sectors, various industries, so that that would stimulate the, uh, the economy because. Uh, last I checked, there are more foreign investors pulling out their money right, from the Philippines, right? I think it was caused by the, uh, what do you call this, the lockdown in NCR and then I think there was an expansion to some areas and so investors pulled out their money and they don't want that to continue so they're, the economic sector is really pushing for the opening of businesses. Okay, continuing here. How the central bank influences an economy? A central bank can be said to have two main kinds of functions, macroeconomic when regulating inflation and price stability. So these are the two you have to remember these. Inflation, regulating inflation, and then price stability. Microeconomic when functioning as a lender of last resort to troubled uh, financial institutions. Okay, macroeconomic influences, it is responsible, the central bank, for price stability. Uh, they must regulate the level of inflation by controlling money supply by means of monetary policy. The central bank performs open market transactions that either inject the market with liquidity or absorb extra funds directly affecting the level of inflation. They increase the amount of money in circulation and decrease the interest rate for borrowing. The central bank can buy government bonds. So when they buy government bonds, so the money goes into the market. Okay? So that would increase the amount of money in circulation. This buying can, however, also lead to higher inflation with, that more, uh, with more money in the economy. So that could lead to you know, inflation. Uh huh. When it needs to absorb money to reduce inflation, the central bank will sell government bonds on the open market. So when they sell, they get the money. So that means there's less money in circulation. Okay. In that sense, that would increase the interest rate and de decreases, uh, sorry, de discourages borrowing. Open market operations are the key means by which a central bank controls inflation, money supply, and prices. Uh, for microeconomic influences, uh -huh. establishment as lenders of last resort has pushed the need for their freedom from commercial banking. A commercial bank offers funds to clients on a first come, first serve basis. If the commercial bank does not have enough liquidity to meet its clients' demands, Commercial banks typically do not hold reserves equal to the needs of the entire market. They just have, you know, the recommended from the central bank, like uh, 20%, 30%. But sometimes, depending on what's going on in the market, more people could withdraw their money. So in that sense, they might not have enough for the withdrawing public, right? The commercial bank can turn to the central bank to borrow additional funds. This provides the system with stability in an objective way. Because essentially, no, the banks do not have the cash, but they do have the assets. But, you know, they're not in the form of cash. They're tied into investments or uh, lending to other people, which they are yet to collect. So it does not mean that they're going bankrupt or they're having through troubles or financial troubles it's just that you know liquidity wise they don't have enough money for the withdrawing public so they have to uh, ask the central bank to help them out give them cash and when we collected from our clients then we would pay it back right many central banks will hold commercial bank reserves that are based on a ratio of each commercial bank deposit so, but sometimes the reserves would uh, not be enough in certain situations. 
Does a central bank may require all commercial banks to keep, for example, a 1 to 10 reserve rate deposit ratio? Enforcing a policy of commercial bank reserves functions as, as another means to control the money supply in the market. Uh, of course, if they increase the reserve, then the bank would have less money to lend. Okay, so there would be less money going into the market. Okay, but if they decrease the reserve requirement, then the banks can lend more to the public. And if they can lend more to, to the public, more money would go into the market. Okay, so that's another way they could uh, influence money supply in the market, right? Not all central banks, however, require commercial banks to deposit reserves, but here in the Philippines, we do have. Okay? The United Kingdom, for example, does not, while well, the United States traditionally does. However, the U.S. central bank dropped its reserve requirements to zero last year, March 2020, and amid the COVID-19 pandemic. Okay? Not sure right now because it's already 2021. The rate at which commercial banks and other lending facilities can borrow short-term funds from the central bank is called the discount rate, which is set by the central bank and provides a base for interest rate. Okay. It has been argued that for open market transactions to become more efficient, the discount rate should keep the banks from perpetual borrowing. They okay? can't just borrow perpetually. It, it means that, you know, just borrow, pay the interest, but we're not going to pay for the principal just as yet. Okay. Um, which would disrupt the market's money supply and the central bank's monetary policy. By borrowing too much, the commercial bank will be circulate, circulating more money in the system. The use of the discount rate can be restricted by making it unattractive when used repeatedly. Okay. Traditional economies. Today, developing economies are faced with issues such as the transition from managed to free market economies. The main concern is often controlling inflation. This can lead to the creation of an independent central bank, but can take some time given that many developing nations want to maintain control over their economies. But the government inter uh, but government intervention, whether direct or indirect through fiscal policy, can stunt central bank development because sometimes they could be complementary, but sometimes they could be contrasting as well. Unfortunately, many developing nations are faced with civil disorder or war, which can force the government to divert funds away from the development of the economy as a whole. Nonetheless, one factor that seems to be confirmed is that for a market economy to develop, a stable currency is needed. Okay. However, the central banks in both industrial and emerging economies are dynamic because there is no guaranteed way to run an economy regardless of its stage of development. So again, it could, you know, they could be right, they could be wrong, but as much as possible, they're doing the best that they can, okay? uh, what do you call it, reacting to the current uh, situation in the economy. Uh, bottom line, central banks are responsible for overseeing the monetary system for a nation, along with a wide range of other responsibilities from overseeing monetary policy to implementing specific goals such as currency stability, low inflation, and full employment. This one, they could achieve this by, you know, injecting more money into the market. Uh, when they lend the money to businesses, to individuals and entrepreneurs, that's how they are able to contribute to this employment, right? The role of the central bank has grown in importance in the last century. To ensure the stability of the country's currency, the central bank should be the regulator and authority in the banking and monetary system. Contemporary central banks are government-owned, yes, but separate from their country's ministry or department of finance. Although the central bank is frequently termed the government's bank because it handles the buying and selling of government banks and other instruments, Political decisions should not influence central bank decisions. Okay, kumbaga decision wise, they should be separate, not influenced by any political person or any political party. Of course, the nature of the relationship between the central bank and the ruling regime varies from country to country and continues to evolve with time. Okay, so that's about it about the central bank. So just a review because we've had this before, but uh, in this one we did highlight how they are you know how they implement the monetary policy okay so that's it for this one thanks and bye